Have you ever pondered the possibility of tiny robots, so minuscule they're almost invisible, replicating themselves? Welcome to the intriguing world of nanobots, a realm where science fiction meets reality. Nanobots, as the name suggests, are microscopic robots, almost as small as a nanometer, that's one billionth of a meter. These tiny marvels are capable of tasks that might seem to belong in the realm of fantasy, but are indeed becoming more and more feasible in our rapidly advancing technological age. One of the most fascinating abilities of these nanobots is self-replication. Imagine a tiny machine, invisible to the naked eye, capable of creating copies of itself. It sounds like something out of a science fiction novel, doesn't it? But the reality is that this concept is not as far-fetched as it might initially seem. As we delve deeper, we'll uncover the fascinating process of how these nanobots form and replicate. The formation of nanobots is a testament to the marvels of science and technology. It's like building a spaceship that can travel within the human body, only on a much, much smaller scale. So how does this miraculous process work? Let's start with the concept of nanotechnology. This is the manipulation of matter on an atomic and molecular scale. We're talking about things that are so small, they're measured in nanometers, that's billionths of a meter. To create nanobots, scientists use a variety of materials. These can include metals like gold and silver, polymers, and even biological materials like DNA. The choice of material depends on the intended function of the nanobot. For instance, DNA nanobots can be programmed to perform specific tasks such as delivering drugs to targeted cells. The design of a nanobot is also crucial. They need to be small enough to navigate through the body, but robust enough to carry out their tasks. The design often mimics natural biological machines like bacteria or viruses to take advantage of their efficient evolved forms. The assembly process is where the magic really happens. This is often done using a technique called self-assembly. This is where the individual components of the nanobot are designed in such a way that they naturally come together to form the final structure. It's like if you threw a bunch of Lego pieces into a box, shook it up and they came out assembled into a spaceship. But it doesn't stop there. Once the nanobots are assembled, they need to be programmed. This involves encoding them with instructions on what tasks to perform and how to navigate. This is usually done using DNA or RNA sequences, which act like a software program for the nanobot. The creation of nanobots is an intricate dance of science and technology, combining fields like chemistry, physics, biology and engineering. It's a testament to our ingenuity and our quest to push the boundaries of what is possible. Now that we understand how nanobots form, let's explore their replication process. The ability of nanobots to replicate themselves is a phenomenon that's as intriguing as it is complex. Imagine a world where tiny, microscopic robots could duplicate themselves, much like a living organism. This isn't a figment of science fiction, but rather an achievable reality in the realm of nanotechnology. The core process of nanobot replication is rooted in a concept known as self-assembly. Self-assembly is the spontaneous organization of particles into a structured, orderly arrangement without any external guidance. It's akin to a group of dancers forming a perfect formation without any choreographer's instructions. Nanobots utilize this principle to assemble themselves from the atomic level using the materials that surround them. Now you might be wondering, how do nanobots find the right materials for replication? Well, they're programmed to recognize and bind to specific types of atoms and molecules. And using these building blocks, they can construct duplicates of themselves, much like how a 3D printer crafts a model layer by layer. However, the replication process isn't just a free-for-all, it needs to be controlled and regulated or else we'd be knee-deep in nanobots in no time. This is where we introduce the concept of kinetic control. Kinetic control is the speed at which a reaction happens. In the case of nanobots, it's the rate of self-assembly and replication. By tweaking the kinetic control, scientists can determine how fast or slow the nanobots replicate. This ensures that the replication process doesn't spiral out of control 
leading to an unmanageable swarm of nanobots. The replication of nanobots is a delicate balance, a dance between self-assembly and kinetic control. It's a complex process that requires a fine understanding of chemistry, physics and programming. But when done right, it opens up a world of possibilities, from medical applications to space exploration. Nanobot's self-replication ability is truly fascinating, isn't it? But have you ever wondered about the implications? The replication of nanobots, while a marvel of science, brings with it a whole new set of considerations. Let's dive into the implications of this fascinating phenomenon. On one hand, the ability of nanobots to replicate themselves could revolutionize medical treatments. Imagine, if you will, a world where nanobots could be programmed to target and replicate within cancer cells, effectively destroying them from the inside out. They could also be used to deliver targeted medication, reducing the need for invasive surgeries and the associated risks. Such advancements could herald a new era in healthcare, one where previously untreatable conditions become manageable, if not entirely curable. However, as with any powerful technology, there's a flip side to this coin. The prospect of nanobots replicating uncontrollably is a genuine concern. This is often referred to as the grey goo scenario. In this hypothetical situation, self-replicating nanobots consume all matter in their path to create more of themselves, ultimately leading to a global catastrophe. The grey goose scenario may sound like the stuff of science fiction, but it's a potential risk we must consider. If left unchecked, these microscopic machines could consume everything in their path from the chair you're sitting on to entire galaxies and beyond. The key, as with all powerful technologies, lies in responsible usage and robust regulation. The potential implications of nanobot replication also extend to the economic realm. For instance, if nanobots become a standard part of medical treatments, who will bear the costs? Will these technological marvels be accessible to all? Or will they further widen the gap between those who can afford advanced medical care and those who cannot? Furthermore, the ethical considerations are immense. What happens if nanobots are used for nefarious purposes? How do we prevent misuse of this technology in warfare or espionage. As we can see, the world of nanobots is as complicated as it is captivating. The implications of nanobot replication are vast and varied, spanning from medical miracles to potential global catastrophe. It's a brave new world we're stepping into, and it will require careful navigation to ensure the benefits are harnessed while the risks are kept in check. In our journey today, we've discovered some truly intriguing aspects of nanobots. These minute machines form through complex processes, replicate rapidly, and carry profound implications. The world of nanobots, while complex, offers a fascinating glimpse into the future of science and technology.